Hey everyone, um, I'm live now. I'm just gonna chill for a bit before I start this. Um, can you all hear me? Is anyone watching? What's going on everyone? Let's just start in five minutes or two, three minutes. Let's wait for it for a bit. <clears throat> I'm trying to see if I can get my comments live on the right here. Um, I'm testing out, yeah, as you can see, compared to the previous one, uh, previous uh, cast, I have a better camera now. It's on this side. Um, I can see the comments coming. If someone's on watching this, type something. Let me see if I can check it out. Um, yeah, so today is going to be fun, uh, hopefully. I've got uh, quite a lot of people that are jumping on this uh, show, if you can call it that, and uh, talking about their time in uh, BBDO. Let's wait for a bit. Um, who's watching? Can someone comment? Let me see if I can get in my interface here. Oh, um, Kiran Jin. Hi, man. Cool, yeah, so I can't see it live, but it's okay. I'll have to open up on the side. Oh, Shaidi, Rambut Silver. Huh? Yeah, man, I think the last you saw me was many years back. It's full silver now. I think um, the hands have also started. What's up? How y'all doing? All good? I know Malaysia is about to open up. So that's good. Good for y'all. Uh, but just be careful. I think uh, some states have called against it. Um, but yeah. You guys uh, be careful, man. We are still stuck at home in Singapore here. Mm, yeah. Cool. I've got 22 viewers, not bad. Um, all right, cool. So let's kick the let's kick start in a bit. The zoo is opening. Okay, that's good, man. Stan, that's fun. At least you'll have to you'll get to ride somewhere. Oh, um, hang on, hang on. I'll be back. Let's wait for two minutes. All right, let's get the shit started. <laughs> Casting couch, huh? All right, guys. Okay, so um, first of all, let me play this shit now. Woohoo! Hi, everyone. All right, let's switch to the better camera. Um. Yeah, so um, you all hearing this? All good. Um, right, cool. So um, we're gonna start this session. Uh, I've got a bunch of friends and ex colleagues and ex clients coming on, joining us, and talking a little bit about this. This is quite sad, right? Um, so a lot of y'all probably seen that uh, my ex agency twice, in fact. 
uh, is folding in Malaysia is quite a sad news. Um, I mean, just thoughts go out to the guys who are there, the people who are, who are still there. And uh, they fought very hard and, and, and uh, did some good work. But uh, PPDO, it's quite sad that it's closing in Malaysia because it's quite a legendary agency, man. I remember back in the days um, when I... So I started off in digital. And after four or five years of digital, I moved on to ATL. But one of the reasons for me to move on to ATL was when I watched one of these ads uh, by the legendary Ronald and his team. And this ad for me, I thought was amazing, man. Like, I'm going to play that now, but I love this ad, right? Um, I thought it was funny. I thought the stuff that they did for KFC was amazing. Uh, it's just sad uh, to see the agency go. But I think today we'll talk, we'll talk a lot about the fond memories that we had in this agency. And for me, one was an agency that was super inspiring. I wanted to join it. Uh, and they had a lot of good talent. So when I joined the agency... Um, much later, um, I think on the day I joined was actually Ronald's last day, and um, I remember going on his first on my first day it was his farewell party, and I joined someone called Man who was also as amazing as Ronald and and Man was just a mastermind, a creative mastermind, right? And uh, joining the team, I, I I joined in as the digital CD uh, for proximity side, and we had load of loads of fun, but. Um, I think, um, so Jared, you see my, you like my, my camera, yeah, I've, I've upgraded it. So yeah, back to, um, back to the ad that actually inspired me to get into advertising ATL was this one, check it out. Oh, what's my car? What's my car? What car is it? It's a yellow car with a, with a KFC or filet burger inside. Oh. It's a real chicken filet inside with a KFC's original recipe. The irresistible KFC OR Filet Burger. Simply better. The irresistible KFC OR Filet Burger Meal. Only two ninety five. dollars Right, that was fun. Uh, I remember this ad, you know, just this guy who lost his, his car, but he was describing the burger, and that was just amazing, man. Like, it was super funny. So I joined in um, twice, uh, first with Man, uh, and I remember working with guys, amazing talents, like... Uh, Andrew, uh, Kevin Le, uh, I think Gary, Villion, all these amazing guys were there. Uh, the leg legendary Jackie was there as well. So we had super fun there, man. Like, it's just sad to see uh, the agency go. But today we'll be talking to a bunch of uh, guys that I worked, a uh, bunch of people that I worked with, whether on my team or on the account servicing team and, um, and even our ex-clients today. So first up, uh, we have someone called Lay. Um, I will just let him. I'll try to dial in, and uh, hopefully we can talk to Lay. Let's see if this works. It's my first time, yeah, doing this. Yo. Yo. Yo, Lay. How are you, man? Yo, hey. Good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, can we see you? We can't see you. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, man. We can't see you. Hey. Okay. Cool. Right. Nice, nice cap, man. Hey, thanks. All right. Cool. Lay. Um, so, you were in uh, BBDO Proximity. Yep. And this was before I joined it. Right? You yep. were already there. Tell us how yep. you got into the place. You know, what made you want to join the agency and uh, then we'll get into some of the work and all that okay i think uh i think i joined in 2009 and the time it was uh, a privilege to join bbdo because it was the agency to be in and uh, a lot of people tried to get in so it's quite difficult i replied like i think a few times only i got a break so when i joined at the time i was like super like intimidated because everybody there was like so good they're like super talented they're like award winners so it was scary lah. but i think um what good about it is that it actually pushes me to be uh better also um to be on par with this uh, legends like really like everybody there was like super talented who interviewed then, like, you who, who did huh? you meet in, the, in your interview first i've interviewed with nina 
then my second interview was with Ronald. How was your interview and with Ronald? I'm, I'm super Ronald curious. was like, again, it was like scary lah because you're talking to a legend, right? And then you feel very small when you talk to them because like, they like super good lah, you know, because the year before they're like, wet conchos, man. They were like, they own conchos. So for me to see him like in front of me, it was like scary lah. <laughs> so, and also I came like from a fraud, small agency, very digital skilled, and he was talking a lot about, you know, big ideas, award winning ideas. So again, that was intimidating, but I think for me, it was a good experience. I just wanted to learn from them, man. And from then on, I, it was a hell of a ride. Yeah. Cool. So uh, tell us a bit about, you know, what accounts you worked on that time, what was fun, you know? Okay, so the time when I joined, uh, there's a mix of local and regional accounts. So Proximity was a regional production hub for uh, the whole of Asia at the time. I think not just Asia, but also Europe. So we handle clients like uh, PNG clients like Gillette. So we do work uh, for New Zealand, Australia. We also do like uh, DHL, FedEx for Europe, uh, Germany, Italy and all that. And also I think we do work for China. So for Fonterra, we do a lot of regional work. So when we do campaigns, it gets rolled up to like uh, different countries. And on our local side, we have clients like uh, Hotling, uh, Maxis, we have uh, AirAsia, we have uh, HP. HP was fun. HP was also regional. So the one we work a lot with uh, our counterparts from Singapore as well as uh, Korea. So it was quite fun. Like, a lot of uh, good exposure for me as well because I get to do like more regional work, global work. And you get to actually meet your counterparts from different offices. So for me, it was quite eye-opening. Cool. Yep. Yeah. And um, just tell us about like what's your fondest memory, like you know your fa- the campaigns that you work with, the people that you work with. You know what's your fondest memory in proximity? I remember being with you, and there was I remember yeah. a story about you there, uh, or not just a story, but something quite crazy. You used to drink a lot, uh, yeah, and you used to have bottles of alcohol in your <laughs> drawer. My drawer, and People would be super scared of you, la. And your nickname back then was Bunny. I know you don't drink yeah. now anymore, but uh, yeah, you, were legend- you were legendary then. Yeah, so I got different shades of uh, <laughs> color la, when I drink. That's so amazing. the worst one is radioactive, la, radioactive pink. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, I think my fondest memory could be, I think there's a lot, but for me, I, just, I really enjoy working with uh, on pitches because that's where you actually work with uh, people from ATL side. So we do more integrated work and everybody just trying to do like push for good work and they were grinding it and working until like the next morning, like for a few days, you don't go home, you just sleep in the office. So that for me was very fun. Uh, and I think to see people like super motivated to win pitches and to do good work, again, that for me is, is very inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the parties are legendary. La. The <laughs> parties are insane, man. Yeah. yeah, man. And and I remember back then working with you because then after Nina left, then I joined in, I think. Um, yep. And we worked with people like uh, Adlin, Sasha, Zai, uh, a couple of people who are on this call. You know, I saw Emi uh, writing, even Lini is saying hi to both of us. Yeah. Hey, uh, hi, Lini. Caroline is here online as well. Uh, a whole. Caroline whole is bunch. legendary. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember drinking there as well. And. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a whole uh, talented bunch that was there. Villion was crazy. Uh, yeah. Gary was super talented as well. Uh, you know, a whole bunch yeah. of talented people, right? And and just being there, uh, I know Ronald left uh, because my interview wasn't with Ronald like you. My interview was Man. Actually, it was just Man asking me to join the team uh, because he had seen some of my work. But it was just cool, man, like being there. And uh, not... Just tell us a little bit about uh, maybe some of the campaigns that you worked on. Uh, I know I've got a couple of videos here all ready to play for you. This was the first time in Proximity, right? Yep. So I think uh, a lot of my work was dedicated to Hotlink because I think that time there was the highest paid uh, account. Yeah, basically Proximity was, was just doing a lot of uh, Hotlink like, work. Yeah, yeah. Hotlink was crazy. La. So the team was like, every day they were like staying in the office. Uh, but it was good fun. And then... Uh, at the time, we were trying to do a lot more digital, uh, more out there kind of digital work, which is uh, kind of unheard of like, in Malaysia. So we tried to push the boundaries. And I think we've managed to do some um, cool campaigns. 
Yeah, let me yep. play. Let me play one. Uh, this yep. one was for. I remember this brief. I remember this piece of work. In fact, I think uh, I traveled with one of the the photographers to to film this. It was crazy, man. Let me play this first, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, man. So I remember this work fondly. Uh, quite a few of us worked on this. Uh, it was a super fun campaign. I remember before that we were doing stuff for a bit for Hotlink, a little bit for sneakers. I remember the game that we created, uh, sneakers, hunger links, and then uh, Astro Beyond. We launched yeah. Astro Beyond uh, with a digital game as well. And, uh, uh, crime solving game. Uh. Say it. Yeah, uh, crime, crime solving, crime solving yeah. game. Um, but this one was super cool. It was way beyond. Uh, there's other campaigns that came after this that won awards, big awards, but very similar to this. But yep. we were, I think, this one was one of the things that were that was way ahead of its time. You know, there was no live, there was no a lot of technology, but we still managed to do it manually. And mm. uh, I remember flying uh, to Bangkok to shoot with one of the bloggers, and uh, it was just a crazy experience, man. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, you want to say anything? Actually, I couldn't see the video just now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, yeah, but you know the yeah, yeah. work. You've been, you've yeah, I know the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, if you pull up uh, Facebook at the same time, you put it on on, on a silent. I think you can see it streaming. It's slightly laggy, but uh, for right. us, for us, but uh, everybody's okay. watching it loud and clear. Good. Cool. Um, I've had people commenting that you know the the stuff is uh, solid, lah. So. Uh, another work piece of work that we also did uh, during our time uh, was something with Yuna, and this was a people-powered Power. concert. Right? Yeah. Tell, tell us a bit about it. Yeah. So for that, uh, that was challenging because I think uh, at the time there wasn't iPhone wasn't big, Android phones wasn't big. So at the time we were stuck with BlackBerry. So BlackBerry was uh, quite a challenging uh, device because at the time you couldn't really stream uh, an actual concert. So we had to kind of hack it and, and make it work. So it was quite cool because at the time uh, working with Yuna and all, it was damn easy, it was fun, and she was like super talented and all that. Uh, so what we did was we created like this uh, virtual concert where people can actually book a ticket before the actual concert. So they actually book tickets, they can book a space. And what happens is when they enter the concert at the time, Yuna actually greets them in real time. So their name actually appears in the concert video. Like she's actually there greeting you. And then after that, the concert starts. Uh, yeah, it was cool, man. Yeah. And this was like 10 years ago. It was like long time, man. Yeah, let's let's yeah. check out. I, I don't, we don't have really have a case study for this, but yeah. I'm going to play a short snippet of, of the single. So basically what happened was if, uh, so we created a, a new single for Yuna. And uh, to launch this, if 10,000 people came online at the yep. same time, we would launch the new single from her. And uh, so it's all done uh, live, even without the live technology. And I remember when it hit 10,000, I, I remember I was in front of the computer 
and yeah. it crashed for a bit. You remember this? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It crashed yeah. for a bit, and then it came back on. Thank God, yeah. and we could launch this video. And somewhere. it was available on uh, on mobile device at the time. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I'm just gonna play a bit of it later, then we'll get back to talking uh, cool. in a bit. Yay, you guys finally did it. You unlocked my new single. So here it is. Enjoy. gonna stop it there i think you'll still find it on youtube so uh you could unlock that single and that's what we created i think uh, nisha said that wow yuna looks super young thanks i think pete singh uh is on so the tankers actually did the think tank team actually yeah. did this with sling and then jay directing and uh nisha said this wow yuna looks so young and paris said this you know look so young yeah this was like 10 years ago i think uh yeah it was that's why she looked young and um it was a we amazing did a, we also did a ugc video on a bus correct i didn't show, i'm not showing that here but yeah um after that finish we also did the music video like you said and people could sing and they could feature on the music video as well so super fun i mean that was our your time in bbdo Proxim proximity i shared a bit of that time and we did some cool stuff we had people like sasha menon Adam Chan, um, all Desmond Ong, you know, Jackie, Adlin, Michelle, all doing amazing stuff in the team there uh, under Mantakwai, helming as the ECD. And um, so then we left, of course, we went and worked in different agencies and also in agencies together. And then we came back again um, to, to and, and I won't get so much into starting the new team and all that. You came back a bit uh later when we uh, i mean the second time that we came in was then to bbdo group there was no proximity there was no bbdo and proximity everything was under one group and uh, we had quite a fun team i'm just showing the yep. picture of the team yeah and uh yeah so um tell us about your second time in bbdo you know how was it then okay i think the second time was uh it was different, but the energy was good. The vibe was good because I think the time, uh, like you said, there wasn't any proximity anymore. I think everybody was thinking as one, so everybody was kind of like hybrids. You have people who can uh, do motion graphic, they can do graphic design, they can do advertising all in one. So they even have like uh, designers who can actually hack stuff. They were playing with Arduino, they were doing programming. So it was, it was fun, like, You know, like that time, it's very of a lot of experimental stuff going on, all prototyping. People were just really having fun and trying to do good work uh energy was good and i think everybody was driven to just you know just do good work well yeah nice and yeah. um i'll just play one of the work that we did um together this was for mercedes we don't really have a case study but this was yep. uh, making off i'll just play that in a bit now and then we can talk a little bit about it <laughs>
So yeah, Lee, um, I think the whole thing about the E-Class was it's a masterpiece uh, yeah. of intelligence. And, and um, yeah. I think when you came in with the idea of creating art um, with the car and around the car, I thought it was quite cool. And um, I think we worked with, uh, who was the photographer we worked together with? Uh, Lo. Lo, yeah. Cool. Tom, yeah. And he did, like, we didn't do a lot of doctoring on the visual. It was yeah. shot with playing with it lights and basic, stuff. Well, yeah. Like yeah. Basic, yeah. And that yeah. was cool about it. So the second time you came in, you're still doing a lot of digital stuff. And uh, I mean, we are out of time now. We're going to move on to another person. But thanks so much for coming and talking about your experience in BBDO Proximity twice in your career. And uh, right now you are, you are in Leo Burnett. And uh, yeah, you've always done cool digital out of the box kind of thinking. And we love that about you, you know, and uh I mean, it was it was amazing to work with you so many times in my career as well. Yeah, I think it's uh, again back to how the culture was um, uh, was started, right? Everybody, you can look at it, look at all the work. It's all team effort. So everybody really chip in. They put in like the, all the hundred percent into it, making it the best work as uh, what we could. So there's a lot of collaboration as well. Um, yeah. So I think it was very like uh, motivating. Like, again, everybody just wanted to do like good work. Cool, man. Cool. So, um, thanks so much for coming on and talking about your time here. And yeah. uh, we're going to move on to someone else. And thanks, Lee. Okay. Speak to you soon, man. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, man. All right. Um, so, we're done with um, our first interview. I hope you all enjoyed some of the work from the old proximity days, uh, BBDO days, and down to uh, the second time Lee and I was there in BBDO. A lot of fun stuff. We're going to call... Our next, uh, yeah, talent that uh, on a, a team member who was there. <clears throat> this one is a newer, newer time like The second time I was there, uh, one person called. Let me introduce your person in a bit. Okay, this person. I don't know if he's going to pick up the. See, he's not picking up. Come on, that pick up. This was a real clown la. <laughs> okay, this guy is uh <laughs> Okay, let's wait for that in a bit. So, ciao, that ho. Come on, man. I don't. Okay, this is the the thing about uh, that who doesn't probably doesn't know how to use uh, Skype. Come on, Tad. Right. Um, let's see if Tad can uh, get to his uh, Skype in a bit. So I see all the funny comments coming in. Tengaroko at Starbucks. Joe Nelson. <laughs> this one is a real clown. La. This one is the TGP. La. They call. No, no, he's actually waiting. He just, he's, he's ready. He's on the call. Um, I mean, he's not on the call. He's ready uh, in front of his phone, I guess. But um, he just doesn't know how to use Skype, I guess. I'm trying to call him again. Let's see if we can find him. Technical issues, man, always happens. Uh, 
Oh yeah, shout out to uh, Graph Studios as well to, uh, who helped out with that Mercedes uh, video. Of course, uh, like Lay said, there was a whole lot of people uh, who worked on this. Um, yeah, it was super fun. I mean, um, like I said earlier, Lay, we worked together twice. It was super fun. First time, um, yeah, first time with uh, Proximity Days, you know, Proximity Days, and then... Um, then we worked again after that um, during our second stint um, we're still trying to see if uh, that can come on or we'll just move on to someone else um, Still waiting for that. Okay, let's see. We have some progress. Let's see what happens. Um, joining the conversation. Join the call. Hello. Yo. Uh, yeah, we finally have you. All right, that. Uh, finally, sorry. finally. What's up? <laughs> How are you, man? How are you? I'm so, okay. Uh, uh, so, this, so this is that um, uh, just shaved his head during the whole MCO. <laughs> yep. So tell us that, like, um, about you joining BBDO. I re I remember your interview. It was done in a bar. Yeah, we were we were at um, what online. is it called again? Online. Online online pub. Yeah, it was online pub. I, I so I was in Leo Burnett. Uh, obviously, I was very junior then. Um, and about, we were, I was there for about three years. And then, of course, then my best friend at the time, Crystal Morais, she told me she's joining BBDO. She was going to leave me. So obviously, I told her, fuck no, you're not leaving me. I'm going to go where you're going. So, <laughs> and then she told me she, she had an interview with you and she got accepted to BBDO. I think at that time, you and um, the team there were trying to build a new team. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very interested. I wanted to try something different. And uh, so I, I dropped you. I remember, I think I dropped you a so I dropped you a LinkedIn message. I yep. said, I would like to meet up with you. And uh, I was a bit shocked when you, you told me, hey, there's another guy called Shun who also would like to, you know, talk to you yep. at online, online pub. <laughs> and uh, fast forward, I think about a month later, we met at online pub. And uh, after about five, six rounds of Guinness, and <laughs> yep, I joined you guys. Yeah, yeah. so I remember, I remember meeting you at online uh, I don't know if I ever told you this. I told Shun, like, hey, really, I'm not sure about this guy after the interview. It's really like he had one good work and then the rest was like, okay, not so. But then we liked your personality and your character a lot. Uh, and plus, you uh, package deal uh, with Crystal and coming in together. <laughs> but then you did really well. You did. I have to say that you grew Thanks. a lot in, uh, in uh, BBDO. You did well. Uh, overconfident a lot of times, but super fun having you around man so tell yeah, us yeah. tell us like what was the your fondest memory in the in video memory in the video what I was think, fun uh, about it what was fun about joining the team how was the team you know um there's one thing about the team that we had was um, i think everyone was very tight i think like blay mentioned just now the the at the environment was great we had I know, I know it's a bit uh, unbelievable to say this, but you know we had pretty much the right people, the right characters to be in the team. Because again, like I said, um, when we join in, the, the it was new. Everything was new. There's a lot of changes, but uh, thankfully we had a lot of the right people. And of course, um, when you had the right kind of people, the right mindset, same wavelength, uh, it creates a lot of crazy moments, lah. So one of the crazy moments I remember was um, I think we had a pitch for you mobile uh, it was an important pitch we had to win it so of course you know everyone was together we were working late nights i think like two nights not sleeping and finally we managed to submit the the, the proposal mm -hmm. when we submitted you know half of us were dead tired but it was about only six o'clock in the evening 
And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Brandon or it was Zach who suggested, hey, let's go to have a, have a couple of beers, lah. you know, celebrate a bit and then we'll get ready for our presentation tomorrow. So without thinking, we all went. It was just a four or five of us. And about 10 p.m., I don't know what happened. Three quarter of the office was there and we, were start, we started partying, we started drinking, buying shots and bottles. I, I remember this. I remember this because I had a, I think somebody messaged me and saying that we, we were still in the office or something like that and saying that these guys are all drinking. Then I was like, what the fuck? Tomorrow's the pitch and, and yeah. uh, the presentation is tomorrow and these fuckers are all drinking. And so we, as I remember, we're going, we, we, we were downstairs we could from the bar and we could hear upstairs all of y'all fucking shouting want the pitch ready want the pitch now i was i don't know i think i was rough or shun and we were like what the fuck is going on upstairs man we went up and you guys were celebrating like y'all won the fucking pitch la it was crazy man i remember we had videos from that night pictures from that night the pitch wasn't even done it was tomorrow and the best part i know you remember this uh you told me that the next day after the presentation, you were shit in the presentation. Like, I have to tell you. Yep, I remember. Yep. I remember you were so wasted. You were fucked. The confidence <laughs> from the night before didn't trickle to the next day. Like. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, I remember very clearly at about twelve o'clock uh, in the midnight. I, I, you were there at the bar, and then you, you kind of put me aside, and then you said that, just go home already. Uh. tomorrow is the big presentation. Uh. it's already. Midnight. I was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Crazy fuckers, man. So I'm going to play one of the U-Mobile, I've got two uh, U-Mobile work here. The first one was from uh, Yus, uh, who wrote this and who act- also acted in this. In between, yep. we'll talk about the presentation that we did for Telco Olympics, but let me play the first version of Telco Olympics. Uh, you won't be able to see it, but people will be able to see it. You're just going to see right. my face. Right. Salam sejahtera. Anda bersama saya lagi dalam siaran langsung Telco Olympics. Sekarang kita berikan tumpuan kepada final acara gimnastik data berirama lelaki. Mewakili pasukan ungu, inilah Apex. Kita saksikan. Ah, nampak macam cedera. Malang sekali bagi wakil pasukan ungu. Disqualified! Coach, serius ke kecederaan ni? Bukan cedera, tapi data sebenarnya dah habis. Oh, data dah habis ya? Tak ada data, tak ada lahir ramah. Yelah, kita orang ada cuma 300 MB sehari aja. Nak buat macam mana? Hmm. 300 MB saja? Kesian. Baiklah, kita ikuti peserta berikutnya. Kita beralih kepada peserta daripada pasukan kuning di Kabaliji. Macam ada halangan di situ. Setahu saya pentas ni tak ada paku payung. Oh, patutlah dia tak boleh masuk. Pentas ni 3G, dia cuma ada 4G. Sekarang kita saksikan persembahan daripada pasukan merah Panas Ling Nampak macam dia tunggu awet ya Panas Ling, kenapa anda disqualified? Saya benci lah macam ni Kenapa buat acara hari selasa? Datang akan untuk hujung minggu saja. Hujung minggu saja. <coughs> uh, kita ke peserta berikutnya daripada pasukan Oren, You Mobile. <coughs> Itu dia satu persembahan yang ringkas tapi unik. Wow, perfect ten. You Mobile telah berjaya dengan data sepanjang masa Di mana-mana saja Telco Olympic sudah membuktikan Siapa lagi power Tunggu apa lagi? Naik taraf kepada Prabaya Power You Mobile Cool, that was fun stuff So, I remember this presentation, right? We were talking yeah. about this earlier 
And um, I remember this funny story that happened. We wanted to go and present Telco Olympics to the U Mobile clients. And um, and you and Zach were like so into it, like super smart. And both of you all wanted to dress like the, 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 the athletes, right? And you all were in shorts. And the funny thing happened was like we were all in the presentation room and you couldn't, you and Zach couldn't come into the building because they didn't want to allow you all because you all were wearing shorts. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, the, the biggest client, the CMO of, of uh, U Mobile was there. And she was like, what the fuck do you all do? Like, why are your guys stuck down? My security is calling me. Like, there's something wrong. And then we were just laughing about it. We're like, okay, uh, the guys actually wore shorts to come and present to you all. They were super excited about it. And they were all just laughing in the room like, after that, right? Yeah, uh, it, was, it was stupid like, because, of course, um, we, we, we prepped. We, want, we prepared for it. We wanted to surprise the clients, you know. And uh, eventually, obviously, the surprise didn't happen like. <laughs> we still look like a bunch of idiots, lah. But it was cool because uh, I think they they like what we presented anyway, and thankfully we managed to execute something like that. Cool. I'm gonna play the next one. It's also from that whole Telco Olympic series. This one was the second part. Uh, we shot this with uh, uh, with the uh, Graph Studio again, and uh, it was super cool, right? Um, kita masih dalam liputan sukan telco menyaksikan minit-minit terakhir perlawanan antara Jingle Lesia dan Merah Leste dalam acara Data Sepak. Hmm, saya hot. Ah, timbang, terbang, tendang. Itulah teknik tendangan kuih loyang. Satu tangkapan yang kemas. Ah, tak mungkin. Merah Leste dengan teknik balingan balik paling kedah. Jingle Lesia menyerang sekali lagi. Berjaya ditahan di situ. Satu lagi counter attack. Merah Leste membalas dengan teknik perutkan yang suka hati. Dan itu dia. Tandukan berpeluh mandi tak mahu. Tapi pertahanan Merah Leste bagaikan tembok besar China. Dan Jingle Lesia dengan teknik tendangan tutup. Aura! Hah? Di mana? Macam tak boleh tangkap saja. Goal! Nampaknya data Merah Leste boleh bertahan satu jam saja. Gunung daik, gunung tahan, data satu jam, mana boleh tahan? Saya berjaya, terbukti, ha! Dan Jingle Lesia mengungguli acara data sepak dengan unlimited ons, app ons, music ons, YouTube, Waze, tanpa hak! Sekian, majulah data untuk negara. Yep, again, we used... Eh, hey, drinking ah? Yalah. <laughs> oh, man. Right, so... um. That was cool stuff. Uh, you also did some amazing work for Visa and stuff like that. Uh, you partnered a lot with Mindy. And, you know, just before you leave, tell us, you know, what was your, like, the thing you liked about that team then? And, and your any other memories, any other thing you want to say about, or oh, a shout out to the team or whatever? Uh, last, um, ones, think, last thing I want to say is that um, we were very lucky that we had a very good team. And uh, not only that, I think, uh, especially had leaders like you, Shun and then of course when Lei came in, um, it just felt very balanced. You know, it felt everything was just right. There was no, um, of course, we a lot of us were were um, very hungry, but there was very minimal ego amongst us, in my opinion. I think even though we, you know, maybe team one team is, was doing a great work, but you know, like you said, right? Everybody just like Lei said just now, everybody just want to chip in and want to help and make sure that as a team we were producing something good. And even when we won, you know, it wasn't just like oh, there was. Um, a, B, and C won. It was like our family was together. It was the BBDO family who won it. So that was the one thing that I really love about that team. Yeah. And shout out to the rest who was watching. I'm pretty sure you're all talking shit a lot about me on the chat right now. I can't see it. <laughs> I'll read it later. <laughs> no, no, not really. Not really. No one saying bad things. Come on. Uh, that, before you, you leave, before we stop this conversation with you, um, people will also remember you from all the parties that we used to go to and cause a lot of noise and havoc. And you used to be like the main cheerleader la, for the group, right? You're just super noisy. La. Super cocky, <laughs> super confident, super noisy. That was you. And uh, it was just amazing to have you in the team, man. Thanks, thanks. And uh, nice talking to you. Yep, thanks for having me. And uh, stay stay safe. <laughs> you too, man. Bye. Bye. Right, that was uh, Chao Tad Ho. Right, um... Next up, I'm calling our next uh, guest. It's actually Vareen, who was uh, an ex-client of ours. And we did some really good work with Vareen. Uh, I'm dialing in now, right?
still can't get green. We try her again. Let's see. Um, Hey, Vrin. Hey. Are we getting a video? No? Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I actually set up on my computer. All right. I, I can so see you. I can see you. Phone. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you after so long. Yes, yeah, nice to see you. Good hey. to see you. So, Vrin was our client uh, in uh, for oh, Libres. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I actually set up on my computer. All right. I can see you, I can see you. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you after so long. Oh, Varin, I think uh, we've lost you. Okay, we're hanging. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it never happened. Uh, but yeah, um, I can hear you, but you're not moving. You're Did frozen. You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm, st I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm so, so Varin, sorry. Um, uh, I think my line is bad. No problem. Quickly, Varin. Um, just you can hear me, right, Varin? Uh. Can you hear me? I'm sorry if I'm lagging. I think my line is not so stable. Yeah, so we can hear you, Varin. Um, I just wanted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, not now. I can. Okay. Just okay. Now I can't. Cool. So very sorry, quickly, yes. um, very quickly, because I think yeah. uh, the connection is. Uh, so tell us, you know, your experience about working with this BBDO team. I think led by Hugo, uh, which we will talk to in a bit later. But tell us a bit about. You know the experience working with uh, the BBDO team and what you liked about it and the, I know we did some really cool stuff on Libres. Yes, yes. Um, I think working with BBDO is kind of hard to forget. Uh, we we probably debate a lot, a lot. You know, one of the agency that is really challenging. You know, um, I would say as a client. You know, can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, okay, okay. Um. I, I, like I say, it's hard to forget because uh, there are just many, many things that um, I think we went through a lot of challenges. Um, yeah, it's not like you pitch, you know, you, you come to us with an idea and then you get through it. I think there are times that you come back many, many times and uh, almost to the time that we are supposed to live it and <laughs> we're not there yet. But um, I, I think I really, really enjoy the time working with you guys uh, because you guys, uh, I can feel your passion. So you, you guys came with very crazy ideas um, and, and uh, you challenge us to, as a client to, to also, you know, uh, be braver. <laughs> so um, I, I can feel it and, and, and it's really, really nice working with you all. And, um, and, and the, the other part is I feel that you're not really an agency. Um, you don't act like one because uh, you do understand, um, you, you listen, and you do take it as your own business. So you come with um, ideas that helps uh, the business and, and not just selling us a creative idea uh, for your awards also. Maybe you do, I'm not sure. <laughs> but at least, you know, from the business point of view, I see that, you know, it, it does, you, you know what we want and uh, you try hard to come closer and help us achieve our business goals. Cool. So I think that is the part that I really, really appreciate. I'm going to I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Like, do you remember any of the work that I never did? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, I can hear you. I'm lagging uh, the whole time, I think. <laughs> I can hear you, I can hear you. Uh, do you hear me, Anna? You can't. It's okay, Varin. Um, yes. Uh, can you hear me now? You can. Can you hear me? I can't hear you actually. Oh, okay, cool. Don't worry. Uh, Hi, Ralph. <laughs> see you. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> oh, cut Shaza. this. We will we'll cut short and um, 
It was thanks for for are calling hearing, in. Are you seeing and hearing? I can <laughs> hear you. I can see you. I think you can't you can't uh, with me, but it's okay. Uh, yes. Thank I, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in and talking a bit about you. the work. I will talk to Hugo later. I will show some of the work. Yeah. Uh, but thanks I, so much. I just tell you guys that you know one last thing is um, so I think um, it's the people that has really made the difference. Um, you have made magical moments, and uh, wherever you are, continue that. And uh, I look forward to see more of your good work. Thank you. Cool. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, so the the line was really bad. Um, so let me switch my screen and move around. We were supposed to talk a lot about the work, uh, but. Uh, So let's see, I'm going to move some people around. I'm sorry to do this, but uh, because uh, Vareen was supposed to talk longer, but nice of her to drop the note. Uh, next up, we actually have Hugo, who said yes to come on. Um, Hugo is always the lifesaver. Uh, all right, Hugo, my man. Hey, hey. what's up? So Hugo. Tell us, man. Tell us, uh, how was your experience in BBD? How, how did it happen? How did you get into BBD? Uh, I know your story well, of how you came from uh, Portugal, so we don't want to hear that story. <laughs> we leave that to the bar conversations. But tell us okay. about your experience, you know. How do you get into BBD? Uh, it, was, it was random. Like, like a lot of what happened to me over the past 12 years here, it was, uh, I had been a client for a few years. I had been in a small agency, in a boutique agency for five years, and I was I was really looking for an opportunity to work with with, with a big uh, network with a with a bigger agency, and and it just so happened through through someone that contacted me, and then a little bit like uh, like what Pat just just mentioned about the in interviews in the bars. I don't know if that was the SOP, uh, but uh, but I, I had my first interview in 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 a bar as well with with Raf that is going to come in, uh, a little bit later, and uh, and yeah, and from there on just eat it off and and it was a quick process i was just brought in uh brought in to manage brands that at the moment i didn't even know so much about that i never really uh contemplated the possibility of doing things like uh like i ended up doing like infant milk uh <laughs> but uh but yeah that's that's pretty much how i came i just wanted a, an opportunity in the in the big leagues i would say and 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 just so happened at the right time Cool. And what was your favorite thing about being in BBDO at that point, man, uh, with the team? Well, I, I I always used to tell people that I I felt like I was playing for for Real Madrid. You know, uh, maybe maybe nowadays as a better analogy with all this that is happening, I think I think I was playing for the for the Jordan Bulls. You know, I don't know if you guys have watched the the Last Dance. Oh but man, I, I love that documentary. It's, it's amazing. amazing, and and it it just really felt like that. You know, it felt like I look around and. There's Michael Jordan, there's Dennis Rodman, there's Scottie Pippen, and no matter what you do, you cannot lose. Okay, the amount of effort, the amount of passion that everyone is putting in, uh, when you look around, that motivates you is one thing, but it reassures you that no matter what, you cannot lose. And we just had Varin on the line, and it's really good that you know clients are coming and, and talking to us, uh, and and they felt that as well, right? So I, I think you guys talk a lot from a creative standpoint because that's where you you sit, but for me, from a business standpoint as well, when we go to the client as suits and when we bring that kind of work, the work itself shows the passion behind it. The work itself shows that everyone in the agency cares. And and it was actually easy, you know, it was easy. I just, I mean, I, I just had to get the ball at the right time and put it in the basket because everything else was already done. There, there was such a big uh, engine behind everything that, that we did that, that it was, it was fun. It was easy. It was amazing. Yeah. So you, at that point, uh, you worked on, uh, I know Fonterra, I worked with you on that. That was fun. Yeah. And then you had, uh, you also worked with Varin and the team, right? Yes. Yes. What so was, I was uh, doing, I was doing the dream, you know, uh, as a man, I was doing infant milk and, and, and sanitary pads, you know, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, it's what I always dreamed my, my whole career. Any, but any it, favorite all... campaigns from that time? Did you like any? Oh, definitely. Did you remember? definitely. Yeah, what was your favorite? Was your I mean, I have to say that that my favorite, because of the effort that went into it, and because it was the first thing that we worked on, even with you, on my very first day, I came in and at 10 o'clock in the morning, we were already having a call with regional 
clients for, for Fernleaf, you know, a legacy <laughs> brand, a brand that was kind of off the map. And we were, we, we were trying to bring it back and doing something really, really challenging because it was a global campaign. Uh, it needed to be aligned at a global level, but at the same time relevant for our target audience here. So I remember that that took months and months and months, but uh, I will never forget going up Broger Hill to, to, to do one of the, you know, the one of the shots. Yeah. yeah, yeah, one of one of the shoot days. I and just... cleverly excused myself from that because I knew I couldn't. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I have we, uh, the video of the other one. The director, yeah. I have the video of the other one. Let me play that. Let me play that. Then yeah. we'll get back to talking after that. We are all born with a little voice inside that says, I can. I can inspire people. I can be great. But as life goes on, the little voice gets drowned out by voices from the outside that say, you can't. You can't be too special. You can't be too ambitious. You can't stand out. You can't be as great as you want to be. So we need to protect that little voice in us. Keep it loud and clear. Feed it and nurture it day by day, drop by drop. So when the noise from the outside gets too loud, you can look to the goodness from home to strengthen the little voice within that says, I can. Fill yourself with daily goodness and let it take you to greatness. Fernleaf, goodness feeds greatness. So yeah, Hugo, I remember this because it was so tough to get um, stuff done. It took months and months and you know, and, and people in the agency will know this when you have regional, you have uh, so many levels to go and present to. Everybody has different ideas, but finally after so long, we got this done. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was amazing, uh, and again, it was a testament to that to that type of work that that people have been talking about when everyone comes together. But I, I remember one day before the shoot uh, of this this video that you just saw, uh, we were still debating because the boy had some yeah. Gigi Nakal, you know, <laughs> that <laughs> he had some funny teeth, and the client was still worried about can we can we do it or not. So that, there were so many things, but at the end, uh, it came out beautifully, and and I think we were all proud of it. Cool. I'm gonna play. Um... One from uh, the Let's Get Real campaign. Mm. Uh, let's check that out and then we can talk a little bit about Libres after this as well. Yeah. What are we shooting here? I don't know, some sanitary pad commercial. Ah! Okay, ladies, let's get real about sanitary pad commercials. Okay, pull some camera. Now, work with tight white pants. White pants? During my period? No thanks. Wouldn't mind some white chocolate though. Try these. Stand by, ladies. Ready for take? Now, release the laughing gas. Wait, what? <laughs> Come on! Do you really laugh and skip with joy the whole time during our periods? Smiling like someone can rasso just to prove there are no leaks. Do we really want to see all that? Pets can't promise us the world, but Libra's Pets promise to give you a really good fit. With secure fit design and deep flow channels for real protection and a real fit for every lady's curves. After all, that's all that matters. Let's get real! No nonsense, no pretense. Just a really good fit. And if you're worried about the bow, you sure mo try confidence on the go with green tea scent. So that was the platform we created for uh, Varin and the team called Let's Get Real. Uh, it was quite fun working on that. Um, we were just breaking all the norms of sanitary pads and, and uh, what other ads we were talking about. And uh, I mean, Hugo, before you go, we're going to jump off to another of our ex-clients after this and uh, anything you want to say about your time there um, in BBDO? Any advice or any uh, shout outs, whatever? No, I, I think I go back to the beginning. I think 
we all should be thankful, you know. I know, I know it's, it, it didn't end up the way that we all wanted, but I really look back at those times. And it was not just about the work we did. It was not just about the agency. I think uh, we, we created uh, relationships for life. We were all a group of very good friends uh, outside the office as well. And I think that's what I take out, you know. Uh, and I'm really happy that I was part of it. I was lucky to be part of it. And, and I'll just continue to remember it forever. Cool, man. Um, I think sometimes it's true, lah. Like the stories and and when you're in the place, even though you leave, it's still a bond that you created. You know, over one two years, you know, you work so hard together, so it becomes a bit like a family and a bunch of uh, really close friends. And we always, every time we go back, we meet up. And uh, I think just that that, that tightness in that group is there, lah. And uh, before you leave, you know, people are calling you the crazy Portuguese guy that runs from office to home. Uh, and yeah, I have to agree like You're quite crazy like. But you were one of the been best, best suits I, I, we worked with like. you, were, you were super steady you. Um, you were you've been, Like you said earlier uh, Whenever we passed you that ball We would always It would be guaranteed Hugo would always put it in the net you know. And we got that kind of trust in you And you did amazing there man. Thank you It means a lot And, and again it was it was a privilege and yeah I hope I can run soon as well because I'm getting a little bit crazy of not being able to run uh, but will, uh, yeah <laughs> thanks VJ and uh, hope you're all safe and carry on man I'm enjoying this we should do this more often I think for I sure, think we can sure. syndicate this and sell it to Netflix <laughs> okay <laughs> I, 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 there's only 40 people watching man you go I'm doing exaggerate slow, you know, slow and like, steady yeah but thanks so much man thanks for coming on take care man bye bye. All right, um, so we had Hugo, one of our power suits in the team. And uh, just a, like they said, it's a crazy Portuguese guy. La. This dude is mad. Like, uh, So next up, we've got uh, Meili. Meili, who was our client. Let me introduce you. Let me dial in first. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. What's up? Hello there. Good. What's up? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Uh, okay. I'm um, going back to work tomorrow, so... Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's good that you guys, it's lifted. You all were stuck so long at home. And uh, so, oh. so mainly, tell us, tell us, like, you know, what you're up to now and where did you work with us before this, you know, and what capacity, <laughs> which brand were you in? Like, just introduce yourself. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, well, I feel like an intro video now. <laughs> so, I'm mainly, if for those of you who remember the crazy client... No, I'm actually one of the nicest, right? No, no, actually you were, you were. I yeah, would always I tell the team weird. like you were sh super sharp. You were a good client. You are a very good client. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm currently with McDonald's. So I've i gone out from FMCG and, and yeah, so far it has been great. Uh, it was started, so be working at, so yeah. Um... So what have I done with you guys? I actually cannot yeah, remember. Yeah, just, just, uh, I, I remember, <laughs> I remember uh, you were a very sharp client um, and we enjoyed presenting to you, always coming to you. I remember one of the breastfeeding room one. Yeah. The, that like was that. A, a really, like that. yeah, that was a really nice project that we did with you. Uh, it was a super yeah, good yeah, initiative. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, we don't, we don't have to talk so long, uh, but just tell us, you know, like what, that you remember fondly about the team, you know, like what did you like working? I know you worked with Hugo, you worked mm. with Lay very tightly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think first of all, I, I've never seen um the team as a client. Uh, sorry, sorry, agency. I think the relationship that we had, I'm not sure whether it's mutual, but I, f I felt like the relationship that we had is, is, I felt like BBDO is an extended um marketing arm that whenever I face something, you know, we have a lot of these global guys coming in and, and trying to um, improve whatever that we're doing, right? Um, I, I feel like I can be very open, especially with uh, people like Hugo, with Lee, and, and I can be very open and tell them, hey, this is what I'm facing, you know, how do we address this so that we can get this across? So for me, the working, working relationship is very transparent. So I really quite enjoy it. I didn't have that I didn't want to have that, you know, client up here and agency down that kind of relationship. So I really, really enjoyed that. And I think particularly the work with um, MM Lacta, um, we were on a very, very, very tight budget. I mean, I don't go into details, right? But what I really appreciated about the team is that you guys came back. I mean, you didn't come up with like a million dollar production idea. Um, I think Lei actually came back and, and 
propose, hey, why, why, why can't we do this? You know, get some real moms and talk about it. And really, that 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 video turned out to be very, very real. I think it's not it's not like top notch production quality, but but it's amazing, lah. So I, I feel like because of the working relationship, because of the transparency that we have, we could explore different different ideas, not having to have that fear of of um i am very scared to present a client because of this and that so so for me i i really enjoyed it and that was probably one of the first really good um um agency client relationship for lack of a better word that i had in my in my career yeah cool and i mean just a uh, banyak mean, pujian kan no 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 I, 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 i mean it was always ups and downs but i remember fondly about you know the working with your team and and stuff like that and Like Lay was mentioning, the stuff that we created was the mom's office uh, for breastfeeding. I thought that was amazing as well. Like you said, you know, we didn't have a lot of budget, but we did something nice with it. And you know, as a client, you know, uh, there's a couple of agency people watching this. You know, what what's your advice to your agency or the agency people? Like you mentioned, like you know, always be an extended arm or. For the marketing team and I believe in that, you know. That's why I went in in house for a bit as well and tried that out. I think it's always the agency and the clients and the marketing team should never have that. Or you're the agency, or you are the yeah. client. You know, mm. I think the best work happens when you help each other. You understand the business side of things, the marketing side of things. You know, uh, any advice to agency people out there? Um, be less defensive about your ideas sometimes. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I mean it in a good way. As in, I, I, I think from my my experience, the best working relationship is when the agency really be very proactive in in knowing what the client is facing. I think there are many times things that clients say. We say that um, there are certain comments made from certain people. There are certain business challenges. So, so I think it's good that if you can understand from the client's aspect. Um, and I think secondly, also be very proactive about asking, "Hey, how's how's this doing? Is this is okay?" You know, little gesture like that, client really appreciate, right? Like you really care for care the business, lah. La. Yeah, really care, lah. And 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 I think, and I think, um, just just be very transparent. I think there are times, you know, when agency cannot deliver certain things, just be transparent about it and 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 manage the client upfront. Don't don't. Yeah, just just be transparent, lah. Don't don't have to like, but actually, depend on what client you get, lah. So yeah. <laughs> so I think your agency is very lucky to have a client like you. Like Lee was just commenting and saying that uh, you are the one of the most creative clients ever. A massive oh, team player. Oh, thank you. So it's a good. Yeah, but usually Lee doesn't give a lot of compliments, you know. So yeah. it's a good thing. Um, and then yeah. I mean, last words. Do you want to say anything uh, to the team that you worked with before or any other? Last words before you. Leave. I wanna okay. I wanna call out names. Um. So okay. So it, just make sure I don't forget anyone. So to you, VJ, to Hugo, to Lay, to Crystal, to Rev, to L, to um Kalida. I don't think she's wow, here. Wow, you remember everyone. To, to to wait wait. I remember. I remember. <sighs> I remember names. Sorry, you, if I don't remember. Did you work with Shun? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, Shun was the mean one, but yeah, but he's the good one, the mean and good one. Yeah, yeah, Shun's yeah. Super I, sarcastic. I, I, I used to be, I used to be very afraid of Shun because of his face. But after that, I think you. No, he's actually kind a funny guy. With him and he's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is. He, he is. just got that that uh, bitchy face, lah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah so so I, I think you guys just just I think if you keep up whatever that you have been doing with us back in Fonterra, I think uh, you you will go far, lah. I think clients will really appreciate your your attitude and and I I felt like the whole team is very very into the business. The whole team is very um they really want the best for the business. They really want the best for client. They also want to help us make uh help us look good. So I think just just keep doing that. Just keep uh I think then you will have a pretty good working I think, relationship. I think it's good, okay, good advice for a lot of people. I mean, the creative or agency people who are out there, especially guys who are work, going to be working with you on McDonald's, you know, I think it's good advice. Uh, and thanks so much for just dropping in and talking to us for a bit. We had a good time uh, with you as a client. Yeah. And yeah. Karen thank you. And thank you, team. guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank thanks, you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Take thank care. You. you too. You too. Um, so I'm just going to play. I'm going to stop this conversation. Bye, Mary.
Bye. And uh, I'm going to play one piece of work we did for Fontana that was super cool. Um, I think Julian was the art director on this. I saw Julian probably watching this. Hey Jules, uh, this is one of your piece of work that we did together, yeah, with Shun. say I ask a lot of questions. Hmm, why do cats have tails? To me, questions are everything. Why do people snore? Lately, I've been curious about the one thing I take every day. Milk. It helps me learn, be strong and active. But there's one thing in some kids' milk that we may not need at all. Added sugars Too much sugar is bad It makes you want more When you have more than you need You may grow fat And it spoils your teeth So parents, before you buy milk for us Ask yourself Hmm, what's in the milk? Is it just nutrients I need? Or are there added sugars? Do you know that no sucrose means there could still be added sugars hiding in the milk? Are you carefully looking at the label? Parents, if I can ask these questions, you can start asking too. Alright, that was something quite cool we did for Fontera, what's in the milk. I think the, uh, the, the talent was amazing on that. And uh, yeah, I'm calling our next guest uh, who's not picking up. All right, he's picked up. Hey. Yo, what's up? What's Ralph? up, man? <laughs> How are you, man? How's Bangkok? Good. Very good. Cool. Thanks for coming on board. Yeah, they finally is... sell, starting to sell alcohol in, in Thailand again. Hey, pause it, lah. Hey, oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot. Milo, man. Milo. Okay, okay. I, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> no, Raf actually um, uh, during fasting, Raf does it uh, properly. But after that, he does a lot of cycling and other things, lah. So yeah. Raf was our head of planning. So tell us, Raf, uh, a bit about your experience. You know, like how did you get into that that uh, that role with us? I remember this, oh. but I just want to hear your story. <laughs> Well, I've you know, known like you for everybody a long else, time. I've known you for a long yeah. time. Like I've, I've, ne- I, I knew of you in Bangkok a long time ago, about ten, fifteen years ago, and then, uh, then we worked together in in BBDO. Tell us about your whole. How did that happen? Yeah, man. Well, you know, we met at Quato again, a long way down the line. I think sometime late twenty fifteen, and you were like, "Hey, come and join BBDO. I'm moving over. You know, uh, we're gonna start something new. We're gonna." change the whole advertising world we're gonna do some good shit you know gonna do some good work and at first i was like yeah yeah i, I was at jwt for almost 15 years at that time already Crazy. Uh, one one agency man both countries thailand and malaysia but then i kept meeting you there i kept meeting shun there shun also every night you know 3 a.m in the morning he'd be like hey come over la let's do some stuff la so we conned you basically we didn't we yeah didn't, we basically. didn't change anything la. But we had yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot, a lot of fun. I'm, but we I'm did still a good, real work, man. We did, we did. I think you know the thing about the video uh, was it wasn't just about all play. Uh, it was work hard, play hard, lah. And I think that was the good part about it. You know, um, from the day that I stepped into the office until the day that we left, we we put everything we had into uh, the work that we did and the fun uh, that we had also. So that was the really great part that I will always remember about BBDO. Any of the work that you fondly remember? What was your favorite few? Um, oh, there's so many, you know, like the Fonterra one uh, uh, plays a, a, a big role in my heart because that was something that I actually started working on before I joined the agency. Don't tell JWT. Uh, but we already started working on it with, at that time it was L Kennedy. Um, and it only got released a couple of months 
uh, before I left, actually. So it took more than a year to get that project off the ground. Uh, thanks to Hugo just now, and, and you saw the work, and we actually got some uh, marketing awards for that. I think it was Appy's. Uh, so it was, it was that one plays a, 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 has a special place in my heart. Um, so many work, man. Um, the Talco Olympics one was, was great, you know. Uh, the, the Visa one, we did some work for AIG. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of work that, to be honest with you, like we did so, uh, we presented so many ideas, like, like Meili said just now, you know, we presented. Cool. Oh, no, you yeah. oh. But two of them were, were special pieces of work, because we always put our heart and soul into each one. Cool, man. Uh, I'm going to play one piece of work. Uh, this one was for Libres, the bread one. Ah, yes. I actually, yeah. <laughs> Funny story behind that one. You play okay, first. Let's play. Wait, <laughs> can move or not? Is it okay? Uh? Parents, tell me the truth. I could look like Pat, meh. That's why. All parents are always calling Pat Bread uh, or Rotty. Baby, I don't like these nicknames. It gives girls the wrong message. Why they need to hide the word pet? Why? I don't know how to absorb blood or so. Only jam. So, if you keep calling me pet, uh, I tell you, you're toast. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Keep... Hello, big auntie. Can you please don't catch us? We're trying to shoot, man. Come on. Yo, so tell us about the, what's the funny story about it? Oh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> I actually ended up having to play the moon for that one. And uh, the shoot was the day after one of our office parties. La, and of course, you know, they were always legendary, right? So bloody hungover in this bloody moon costume. Don't know what the hell your head of planning is doing inside a moon costume, sweating his balls off. La, yeah, but, you uh, did a lot. <laughs> you were not just the head of planning. Yeah, the head of putting and yeah. you were the head of uh, inspiration sessions. I won't go there. Yeah. Uh, you uh -huh. were the head of we we jammed in your room, played music all the time. We created songs for pitches. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. The the, the I I feel like um yeah, it was more than just strategy that that we worked on at, at BBDO. Everybody played a role in everything to make the work happen, you know, like writing music playing, you know, uh, you sang, you know, our ECB was singing in, our, in, our, in the, the music that we wrote. Um, everybody, you know, worked their asses off to get the work done. La, and that was, that was really fun to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, I have to thank, you know, my team also, right? Jem and Shaza and also Nas at one point who, you know, the three of them were amazing strategists. Yeah. Uh, they, they Actually, I didn't do much or so. They did most of the work, right? I just sat there and and uh, just said, hey, good job. <laughs> you, you were acting, man. You had a lot of other things to do. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I had, I had busy occupation as a caveman. You acted as a caveman, yes. <laughs> I'll maybe play that tomorrow, <laughs> but yeah. I'm actually talking there to was... Kubei tomorrow. You're talking to Kubei? Kubei. Uh, yeah. Like this. Oh, nice, like this. nice. Cool. Nice. So, yeah, he, he deserves his own section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kubei's a funny guy. So, I yeah. mean... Just before we move on to the next person, you know, like, tell us a bit, like, you know, any last words, like, um, any fond wow. memories, any last words. I know the office party so, is always your fondest memory. Like, <laughs> like, the Christmas, Christmas one, especially. Like, like. Yeah, the Christmas one was amazing. <laughs> always will be. I'm but, sure. you know, every day, to be honest, going to work at BBDO, was a pleasure for me. And I think it's all about, you know, uh, we have this hashtag that, um, you know, not many, uh, anybody who's not in the BBDO fam, you know, will, will kind of make fun of us for, for doing it. But, uh, and it was created by Nas, I just found out. But when I joined, it was already one of our hashtags, BBDO fam. And I think that's really what we were. We were a family, you know, yeah. um, all of us, like you know, everybody, I, I wouldn't start t talking about names, but I know everybody who's, um, you know, was a part of BBDO. I even, you know, um, Farah and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and what's the other MD's name? Shit, man, I forgot. The other GM. 
John, John Taylor, right? Sorry. Yeah, even Farah and John, everybody played a huge role. Uh, uh, HR, you know, uh, core, you know, and all our IT guys, all our FA guys, Rizwan. everybody. Yeah. Rizwan, yeah, who is online, I think. Yeah, um, yeah you, you, you guys were all champions, man. And, and you really made being at BBDO special. Those two years for me, I know for some of you guys were longer. Uh, but those two years, every day, going to work was like, yeah, what's going to happen today, right? What magic can we create today? And, you know, really thank you. And thanks to you too. Hanging, lah, bro. Yes. I'm not, uh, I wouldn't say you're hanging. Uh. Yeah, okay. Now you're can you hear me now? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna finish up. I just, I was just thanking you actually for putting oh. us all, oh. uh, all this crazy cowboys together. You know, um, all your non-typical people, uh, non your non-typical suit, look at Hugo, right? Your non-typical planner, because uh, I'm really not your typical planner. And I don't think Jem Shaza, I have, you know, we've, we've tried to be our own like creative kind of planners. Uh, do the work before the work, as we always used to say. Um, you, you know, your non-typical producers, Nisha, um, everybody there was your non-typical agency person, but somehow it worked. And therefore, you can see lah, the work also was, was not very typical. And I think mm. that's something that's special. I think it was a good shout out lah, to Kaur, Rizwan, Nisha, who yeah. did amazing with Zaira. The whole yeah. our production uh. team was crazy. Even to our, our our receptionist, Mani, who you forgot her name, lah, but she was cool. <laughs> yeah, she's cool. Yeah. And and of course, Hadi, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, the, Hadi, man. The editor team, Hadi. They did magic she, with Chris, case study videos. Chris, yeah, amazing. That Baju Melayu thing, oh man, that was, oh, that that was, was cool. Awesome. It got wild yeah. uh, quite a bit, that one. But dude, yeah, that's... thanks so much, man. Thanks for coming thanks. and talking. And it thanks was a pleasure just... working with you, as always. Yeah, man. You're, just a, you're, just, you're not just a strat guy. You're, not, you're like everything. You're like a super creative dude in the office, doing all kind of shit, even acting <laughs> and playing music. And that, I think that helped with the culture quite a bit, you know. Um, I think that positive energy you brought to the team and all that was super amazing, man. It was yeah, a pleasure extreme. working with you, man. Extreme, extremely pleasurable pleasure. <laughs> Fucking Get you're high, back. man. No, no la, sober, la. man. I'm going to go ride my bike now. Berpuasa. Thank you. And, uh, Everybody everyone... stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Stay Thanks, healthy. Thanks. Uh, yeah. we got one more person soon coming on board. La. Next. All right. Thanks so much, Take man. Take care, bro. Okay, bro. Bye. Oh, no. All right, um, so last session, and uh, I got just two or three pieces of work to show. Uh, we're gonna get, I'm gonna play one of this uh, for Libres, which I like a lot. Um, super cool stuff. Um, I'm gonna play this first. Pumping iron, that's manly. Ha! Work those muscles, feel the pain. Real men know that period cramp can be painful and how strong women are for dealing with them. Know why ladies get cramps? Because the uterus is contracting! It's painful because of this flur. Pro, pro, how to say this, huh? Prostaglandins. How to be her hero? Got tips for you, bro. A hot pack or medicine from Dr. Love. Being sweet is manly. Try it out, guys. Let's get real. Real men understand periods. Get more tips. Libresletsgetreal.com.my slash men. Cool. Uh, hey Shun, thanks for coming on board. Well, so I just played. I just played the menstrual work. I remember um, there was uh, some work from uh, Neve and uh, Talita, uh, and uh, yeah. I remember we worked on this for like the longest time. We're trying to convince the clients to do a guide, a men's guide to uh, periods, and it was yeah. so crazy, man. Like uh, finally, when we left, they bought it, and um, I mean, it was just I was glad that it went out. So. Shun, just tell us, you know, a bit about, you know, your you joining BBDO, the story, um, what mm. you enjoyed about BBDO, you know, just tell us your whole experience. I worked with you before BBDO, we were both in Creative Juice, yeah. so Shun was yeah. one of our amazing, amazing talents in, in Creative Juice and TBWA, we did a lot of amazing work together, so yeah, then what happened? Yeah, so um, I think the major reason for me joining BBDO at the time was because VG Anand, you want to promote me. Uh, in creative juice, so I had to, I had so to move to... on. But no, no, but seriously, uh, I think it was a great opportunity. Uh, I heard about the 
the crazy team that was leaving, like the highly awarded team that was leaving. Um, and it was a good, you know, chance to to put my stamp on things. Uh, right, like I needed to see what uh, I could be uh, I could be doing uh, in a bigger role. So uh, it was it was exciting because I think it was like a completely blank slate that, that I had to work with. Um, and the funny thing is, like I think a lot of people didn't know, but when I joined, I was so surprised that you joined later on because that was that was. Uh, that was a nice, uh, that was a nice surprise, lah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think everything since then. Oh, like and like later though, so I, I kept trying to join the big agencies, but I couldn't. So it was my way, I guess, of proving to myself that I could um, become a part of video. So, got the name was so strong, right? Yeah. Cool. And what was like your fondest memory? Any work that you remembered, or any crazy uh, stories from from uh, the our BBDO days? Yeah. Crazy stories. I think the best ones probably shouldn't be discussed on social media, like. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, not those. But... Yeah, I think well, yeah, a bit, a bit too much. Any um, safe for web ones? Yeah, <laughs> safe for web. I think uh, two pieces of work stand out to me, and these were probably mm-hmm. the first one is something that no nobody's ever seen except for ourselves. Was the one where uh, for Mother's and Father's Day weekend, we each of us who weren't parents, we gave up uh, a day off to parents. Yeah, remember we did that internally, yeah. and all we did was just write a nice letter and left it on the table so parents so they can enjoy an extra day off. Um, that kind of sacrifice, I think, uh, it it meant a lot, lah. You know, to us internally, I think it just brought us. It just showed how much of a proper BBDO fam we were. Um, another thing nice that I think we did was when we started writing several letters to people who started leaving us. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, I remember the one you wrote for Jeff. Yeah, that was fun. Right, that was right. Nice. Yeah. So you know, I think the first one also we wrote for Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Jeff. Shout out to Jeff, lah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wrote something about him loving nuggets and all that. And so, rapping. It, it, yeah, and rapping. Mm-hmm. It, he can rap. Uh, by the way, if you can catch him, you should ask him to rap. Um, it, it just showed like you know, it, you, you can still be a part of the family even though you leave, lah. And I think that's what some people forget. Uh, when you get caught up in agency work, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, even when you go somewhere else, you know, you you kind of leave stuff behind. So it's nice, like, you know, you're somehow connected. The industry is still so small. Yeah, I think, and, I think you, yeah. there's a, like, a, you're threading into an interesting point there, you know, like when people leave, they don't just, you leave as friends and, and uh, you know, you it's not like you're enemies and people always think like, oh, I'm moving to a different agency or different network. I'm gonna beat this motherfucker, you know. Like it's not like that. Like it's still friendly yeah. rivalry. There is rivalry, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's just advertising, man. It's just work. Like you know, nobody dies. Like we're not saving lives, you know. We're we're just putting stuff out there to have fun, you know. It's just not yeah. about like the crazy hunt for metals, you know, those kind of things, right? You're you're right. I mean, uh, I mean, admittedly, there was a time when I, I felt that way, like, You know, like I thought that the hunt for metals was everything, but then you you, you probably grow out of it as you as you mature. And yeah, you're, you're saying like, you know, you move on to different camps and all that, but it doesn't mean you have to be enemies, right? It's so silly and so petty. And uh, I think especially in the Malaysian industry, so you see a lot of this funny political stuff that goes on, uh, all these weird clients and camps. Um, and we are grown men and women, you know, why are we behaving like this? I, mm-hmm. I don't think we've got to go in, into that topic too much, but... I yeah, yeah, that's for another day. Yeah. That's maybe yeah, for another day. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to play one piece of work first. Uh, we can stop for yeah. a bit. This one was one of my favorite from Tut and uh, the team and you and all that. I love this ah. visa piece of work. And uh, okay. I think it was it was very nicely done. This one, I don't know. Do you, do you got anything to say about this? I know you worked on this with Tut and the team. Yeah. So I remember Raf and Mindy walking in my room and then they showed me the script. And it was so simple. You could see it uh, bouncing off the page, right? Like you could you could see it happening already. Uh, I remember also uh, the client wasn't exactly the easiest to convince, right? Uh, it took a few rounds, um, but Rin, Mindy and Raf really pulled through, la, Like hey, Raf, la, and Tat. Raf never did anything, lah. Really, he was just around. Uh, <laughs> Mindy and Tat really pulled through, and yeah, it was a really nice piece. Thanks to uh, Jay also, of course, put his stamp on it. Yeah. Maybe show it. Uh, it's a nice cut out piece. Uh. Cool. I'm just going to play this now. Yeah. 
Yep. And fairy tales come true What if I told you the birds sing a story That's only heard by you What if I told you you could ride a rainbow And dance upon the moon What if I told you the magic was real Would you believe me? I bring a cloud down Cool, man. That's, uh, I really love that work and just shout out to Jay who did an amazing job and his team visually but also the music from Fuse and, and Jimmy and his team uh, oh. was just amazing, haunting, right? The, the track. I remember working with Tan on the track and we just kept on changing because both of us like are su- super into music. Right. We just kept on going yeah. on like we change this, change this. I think it should yeah. be like this. But it was just and amazing. Part of, being part of all, uh, yeah, 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 of course. And uh, I mean, just before we leave, right, uh, we wanted to touch on, on I mean, one thing that was good. Uh, I remember we were super involved in the process of handpicking everyone that joined uh, the agency, yeah. right? And uh, yeah. if someone wanted to recreate that, you know, um, what would your advice be? Um, you know, it's really a simple but it's not as basic as it sounds like you have to spend time with the people that you so-called handpick, right? Just, you know, I remember talking to Tommy, right? CK, he was an intern at the time. Uh, he came from a fucking unknown school. I don't know where the fuck he went. Uh, but he spent, I think, close a couple of hours with him just to pick his, uh, not pick his brain, but uh, just to know what it's about. And because every single person is a very important component. Um, so you have to, uh, go with a hit or miss approach, lah. You know, see who can jam with who, and try to create like people who actually generally care for each other. Just go with character first. Um, cause the skills and all can come later, lah. Obviously, some people were a lot more skilled than others. Uh, and honestly, I think both of us actually we we didn't do much, lah. We think about it. We learned yeah. a lot of other people. Yeah. I think I think yeah. the most important thing, like you said, is finding the right. Uh, energy yeah. and uh, right it's not about yeah. talent right i think the personality mm-hmm. i think we spent yeah. so long interviewing a lot of them together like that was in a bar we met all of them in mm. some in super awkward situations as well but yeah. uh, i think most important was the personality and the and the yeah. culture they would bring in or the personality they would bring to the team it's always like putting a jigsaw puzzle right you find someone okay this person is good at art and but his energy is amazing. Who would be the right partner for this person? You yeah. know, just finding that and just placing together like jigsaw pieces, you know. Yeah, and uh, also, you know, I think another key thing was we made it a point not to hire assholes, lah. I think that was <laughs> that was a key thing. Uh, I I we never subscribed to the to the whole thinking like you know even if your work is great, you can be a, a dick about it or an asshole about it, and you can get away with it. Yeah, uh, we didn't allow that to happen as much as we could, you know. Um, and yeah, I think when we roll with that, uh, the work shows up. Uh, it shows. Cool. For any, itself, right? any, so. any last words? I'm going to play one last oh. piece of work. Uh, cool, cool. This. Let's play a piece of work. But uh, any last words? Um, no, not really. I think uh, hopefully you can... I was hoping that you can get on, get in touch with some other video people also beyond our group. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Be cool, uh, uh, yeah. In the future, yeah, we will... We will Speak to a few more. I think Amit Sutta, yeah. probably ex-planner, 
from BBDO, yeah. we got Adam Miranda and all that. Um, yeah. I mean, I just want to really okay. reach out to the ones that were closer to and, and talk even the, to some of the clients yeah. and stuff like that. It was just like last two days, just finding uh, people to talk on this. But yeah, thanks for coming on board, man. And uh, no good problem. luck should now run his own uh, content agency called Your Maker. They're doing a lot of cool stuff. Oh, we are not, we are not a production house. Uh, we are actually a proper agency. So. Yeah, yeah, so I said, I hope con- everybody knows that, I said that. content agency, yeah. but yeah, now content is the cool word. Yeah, yeah content is cool word. So you are wrong, wrong with that. Uh, content agency is okay. Yeah. And uh, thanks. yeah, thanks so much, Shun. No problem. I'm going to play this piece of work. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> あ、さらに怪しいんこかった。ホクシー。ナムダチンゴいつせよ。アニメン、ハラリアニシャソコロンガ。ハラリじゃん。ハラチャキミよ。おじねキムチボコ、オネルメンフレッチキンね。ちょ